Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Chapter 43. Elizabeth, as they drove along, watched for the first appearance of Pemberley Woods with some per- perturbation, and when they laughed, and when they at length they turned to, into the lodge, her spirits were in a high flutter. The park was very large and contained a great variety of ground. They entered it in one of its lowest points and drove for some time through a beautiful wood stretching over an, a wide extent. Elizabeth's mind was too full of for conversation, but she saw and admired every remarkable spot and point of view. They gradually ascended for half a mile and then found themselves at the top of a considerable eminence where the wood ceased and the eye was instantly caught by Pemberley House, situated on the opposite side of a valley into which the road with some abruptness wound. It was a large handsome stone building standing well on rising ground and backed by a ridge of high woodsy hills, and in front a stream of some natural importance was swelled into greater but without any artificial appearance its banks were neither formal nor falsely adorned elizabeth was delighted she had never seen a place for which nature had done more where natural beauty had been so little counteracted by an awkward taste they were all of them warm in their admiration and then at that moment she felt that to be mistress of pemberley might be something they descended the hill across the bridge and drove to the door and while examining the nearer aspect of the house all her apprehensions of meeting its owner returned she dreaded lest the chambermaid had been mistaken on applying to see the place they were admitted into the hall, and Elizabeth, as they waited for the housekeeper, had leisure to walk, to wonder at her being where she was. The housekeeper came, a respectable-looking elderly woman, much less fine and more civil than she and had any notion of finding her. They followed, less, they followed her into the dining parlour. It was a large, well-proportioned room, handsomely fitted up, Elizabeth, after slightly surveying it, went to a window to enjoy its prospect. The hill, crowned with wood from which they had descended, receiving increased abruptness from the distance, was a beautiful object. Every disposition of the ground was good, and she looked on the whole scene. The river, the trees scattered on its banks, and the winding of the valley, as far as she could trace it, with delight. As they passed into other rooms, these objects were taking different positions, but from every window were the beauties to be seen. The rooms were lofty and handsome, and their furniture suitable for, to the fortune of the proprietor. But Elizabeth saw with admiration of his taste that it was neither gaudy nor uselessly fine, with less of splendor and more real elegance than the furniture of Rosings. And of this place, thought she, I might have been mistress. With these rooms I might now have been familiarly acquainted instead of viewing them as a stranger. I might have rejoiced in them as my own and welcomed to them as visitors my aunt and uncle but no recollecting herself that could never be my uncle and aunt would never would have been lost to me i should not have been allowed to invite them this was a lucky recollection it saved her from something like regret she longed to inquire of the housekeeper whether her master were really absent but had not courage for it at length however the question was asked by her uncle and she turned away from him but while miss reynolds replied he was adding but we expect him tomorrow with a large party of friends how rejoiced was Elizabeth that their own journey was had not by any circumstance been delayed a day. Her aunt now called her to, to look at a picture. She approached and saw the likeness of Mr. Wickham suspended amongst several other miniatures over the mantelpiece. Her aunt asked her similarly how she liked it, and the housekeeper came forward and told them it was the picture of a young gentleman, the son of her late master steward, who had been brought up by him at his own expense. He has now gone into the army, she added, but I'm afraid he has turned out very wild. Mrs. Gardiner looked at her niece with a smile, but Elizabeth could not return it. And that, said Mrs. Reynolds, pointing to the other miniatures, is my master, and it is very like him it was drawn in the same time as the other about eight years ago. I have heard very much of your master's fine person, said Miss Gardiner, looking at the picture. It is a handsome face, but Lizzie, you can tell us whether it is like it or not. Mrs. Reynolds's respect for Elizabeth seemed to increase on this intimation of her knowing her master. Does that young lady know Mr. Darcy? Elizabeth colored and said, A little. And do you not think him a very handsome gentleman, ma'am? Yes, very handsome. I am sure I know none so handsome, but in the gallery upstairs you will see a finer, larger picture of him than this. This room was my late master's favorite room, and these miniatures are just as they used to be then. He was very fond of them. This accounted to Elizabeth for Mr. Wickham's being among them. 
Mrs. Reynolds and then directed their attention to one of Miss Darcy, drawn when she was only eight years old. And is Miss Darcy as handsome as her brother? said Miss Gardner. Oh, yes. The handsomest young lady you've ever seen. And so accomplished she plays and sings all day long, and the room is new instrument just come down for her. A present from my master. She comes here tomorrow with him. Mr. Gardner, whose manner were easy and pleasant, encouraged their communicative cativeness by his questions and remarks, and Mrs. Reynolds, either from pride or attachment, has evidently great pleasure in talking of her master and his sister. Is your master much at Pemberley in this course of the year? Not so much as I could wish, sir, but I dare say he may spend half of his time here, and Miss Darcy is always down from the summer months. Except, thought Elizabeth, when she goes to Ramsgate. If your master would see him, you might see more. Would marry, you might see more of him. Yes, sir, but I do not know that when that will be. I do not know who is good enough for him. Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner smiled. Elizabeth could not help saying, It is very much to his credit. I am sure that you would think so. I so know more than the truth that everybody will say knows him, replied the other. And Elizabeth thought this was going pretty far, and she listened with increasing astonishment as the housekeeper, housekeeper added, I've never had a cross word from him in my life. I've never know, I've known him since he was four years old. This was praise of all those most extraordinary, most appro- opposite to her ideas, that he was not a good-tempered man, that he had been her fireman opinion, firmest opinion. Her keenest attention was awakened, and she longed to hear more and was grateful for her uncle for saying, There are very few people of whom so much can be said. You are lucky in having such a master. Yes, sir, I know I am. I, If I was to go through the world, I could not meet with a better. But I have always observed that they are who good-natured with children, or good-natured when they grow up. And he was always sweet-tempered and most generous-hearted boy in the world. Elizabeth almost stared at her. Can this be Mr. Darcy? thought she. His father was an excellent man, said Mrs. Gardner. Yes, ma'am, he was indeed, and his son will be just like him, just as affable to the poor. Elizabeth listened, wondered, doubted, and was impatient for more. Mrs. Reynolds could interest her on no other point, and she related on the subject of the pictures, the dimensions of the rooms, and the price of the furniture in vain. Mr. Gardiner, highly amused by the kind of family prejudice to which he attributed her excessive commendation of her master, soon led again on to the subject, and she dwelt with energy on his many merits as they proceeded together up the great staircase. "'He's the best landlord and the best master,' said she, "'that ever lived, not like the wild young men nowadays, "'who think of nothing but themselves. "'There is not one of his tenants or servants "'that will give him a good name. "'Some people call him proud, "'but I am sure I never saw anything of it. "'To my fancy, it is only because he does not rattle away "'like other young men.' "'And what an amiable light does this place him,' thought Elizabeth. "'This fine account of him,' whispered her aunt as they walked is not quite consistent with his behaviour to our poor friend. Perhaps we may have been deceived. That is not very likely. Our authority was too good. On reaching the spacious lobby above, they were shown into a very pretty sitting-room, fitted up with greater elegance and lightness than the apartments below, and they were informed that it was but just done to give pleasure to Miss Darcy, who had taken a liking to the room when last at Pemberley. He is certainly a good brother, said Elizabeth, as she walked towards one of the windows. Mrs. Reynolds anticipated Miss Darcy's delight when she should enter the room. And this is always the way with him, she added. Whatever can give his sister any pleasure is sure to be done in a moment. There is nothing he would not do for her. The picture gallery and two or three of the principal bedrooms were all that remained to be shown. In what manner he thought of her, and whether in defiance of everything she was still dear to him. Perhaps he hasn't been already because he felt himself she had willingly turned to look at some of the drawings of Miss Darcy's whether he had felt more pain more or pleasure in seeing her, she could not tell. But he certainly in the gallery, there were many faces. Family portraits. At length, however, the remarks they of could her have companions little on her absence of mind the attention of a stranger, and she felt the necessity of appearing on more like the only face whose features then they could entered be known the woods to her. And at last, adieu to the river her. for a while, and she beheld the striking resemblance of Mr. Darcy with such a smile over the face. With the opening of the trees, gave the eyes some power to wander, and where many.
Charming she stood several the minutes alley before the picture in earnest contemplation and returned to it again before they quitted many the gallery. Occasionally part of the Mrs. Street. Reynolds informed Mr. Gardner that it had been taken in his father's wish of going time. around the whole park, but feared it might be there was certainly at this moment to Elizabeth's mind the triumphant smile they were told that it was ten miles round she had ever felt in the height of their acquaintance. The commendation bestowed on him by Mrs. Reynolds was of no trifling nature. The edge of the water praise is more valuable than the praise of an intelligent servant. As a brother, a landlord, a master, she considered how many people's happiness were in his guardianship, it was a spot how much a pleasure or pain was in his power to bestow, yet visited and much good or evil must be done by him. To a Every idea that had brought, been brought forward by the housekeeper was favorable to his character, and as she stood before the canvas Elizabeth on which he was represented and fixed his eyes upon herself, she thought of his regard with a deeper sentiment of gratitude Mrs. than it had ever raised before. And could go no she remembered its warmth and softened its impropriety of expression. Her niece was when all the house was submit, that was open to the general the inspection had been seen, they returned the downstairs, in the nearest and taking leave of the housekeeper were consigned over to the gardener, who Mr. met Gardner, them at the hall door. Able to in As the they walked across the lawn towards Taste. the river, Elizabeth turned was very again. fond of fishing. Her uncle and aunt stopped and also, was so much while engaged the former was watching the occasional appearance of the building, some trout in the water, and talking to the man about them, that he advanced little, which led behind it to the stables. But while wandering on this slow manner, they were within twenty yards of each other, and so abrupt his appearance that it was what it had been at first sight. By the sight of Mr. Their Darcy approaching them, and, and at no great distance, the walk being deep here less sheltered them on the other side, allowed them for to a see moment them before they met. From Elizabeth, however, astonished, shortly recovering in astonishment, at least more prepared for an interview than before, and resolved to appear and to speak at least calm if he really intended to meet them. She had instinctively turned away. For a few moments, indeed, she felt that he would probably strike on some other path. This idea lasted a while. Had his first appearance, the turning in the walk the concealed her had just from their view and turning past him immediately had been before them. To With a the the glance, she saw that he had lost none of his now. civility. Mr. Darcy, the gardener's his expression of surprise as she began as they met to admire the beauty of the place. place. But she had they got stood a little on the words delightful while he was talking with some unlucky recollections imputed and she scarcely dared to lift her eyes back of his face and knew not what to answer. She returned to her change civil inquiries after her family. Mrs. Gardner was standing a little behind on her pause manner since he asked her if she would do him the honor every of introducing him to her friend. Was this was a stroke of civility for which she was quite unprepared, idea of the and she could have hardly found their recurring in her mind. That isn't being few minutes in which they continued together were some of the most uncomfortable of her of life. some of those Nor very people against whom he has been revolted. His accent in his had none of its usual sedateness, and it, he repeated his inquiries as to the time of her having left Longbourn, and of her stay in Derbyshire so often. And the introduction, however, was immediately made, and that she named their relation the, to at length, every idea seemed to him. fail him, and See after standing a few it. moments without, without saying a word, suddenly recollected himself camping as to flee as he could. From the others then joined her, companions, expressed that their he was admiration surprised of by the figure. connection was evident. But Elizabeth heard not and a word, and sustained it, however, by her own with fortitude. Followed them so far from going away, she was overpowered by shame and vexation. With Mr. coming there was most unfortunate. Elizabeth could not be ill judged thing in the world. Could not but be pleased. Could not but appear to him. It was consoling that he should know she had some relations of whom he strikes so vain. No need to blush. It might she seem as if she had purposely to all that passed between them and again. glorified in every oh, expression of every sentence of her uncle, he come which marked his intelligence, his taste, or his good manners. Had they been only ten minutes the sooner, they should have turned, turned upon beyond the reach of and she heard Mr. Darcy invite him with he was the greatest civility to fish there as often as he chose that while he continued in the neighborhood, offering the at the same time to supply him again over the perverse pointing out the parts of and his behavior was strikingly all sport. What could it mean? Mrs. Gardner, who was walking arm in arm with Elizabeth, gave her a look of expressive wonder. And Elizabeth said nothing, but family. gratified her exceedingly. Never in her life had the she seen his manners so little for herself. dignified. Her Never astonishment, he however, was extreme, and continually was she repeating, What a contrast so altered from what could it proceed? It cannot be for me, it cannot be for my sake, when he put his letter in her hand, softened. she knew not what to think, nor how to account for it. My reproofs at Hunsford could not work. And now entered a beautiful walk by the side of the water, and every step was bringing forward a nobler fall of ground. After walking some time in this way, the two ladies front and the two gentlemen behind, on resuming their places, as if descending to the brink of the river for the better inspection of some curious water plant, there chanced to be a little alteration. It originated with Mrs. Gardner, who fatigued by the exercise of the morning, found Elizabeth's arm inadequate. To her that support, and consequently, house, her husband it might be. Mr. Mr. Darcy, Darcy took her place was. by her niece, and they walked she on longed together. To know what at that After moment a short silence, the, first li the lady first spoke. She wished him to know that she had been assured of his absence before she came to the place, and accordingly began by observing that his arrival had been very unexpected. For your housekeeper, she added, informed us that you would most certainly not be here until tomorrow, and indeed, before we left Bakewell, we understood that you were not immediately expected in the country.' 
He acknowledged the truth of it all and said that business with him, Stuart, had occasioned his coming forward a few hours before the rest of the party with whom he had been travelling. They will join me early tomorrow, he continued, and among them are some who will claim an acquaintance with you, Mr. Bingley and his sisters. Elizabeth answered only by a slight bow. Her thoughts were instantly driven back to the time when Mr. Bingley's name had been the last mentioned between them, and if she might judge from his complexion, his mind was not very differently engaged. There was also one other person in the party. He continued after a pause, who more particularly wishes to be known to you. Will you allow me, or do I ask too much to introduce my sister to our acquaintance during your stay at Lambton? The surprise of such an application was great indeed. It was too great for her to know in what manner she ceded it. She immediately felt whatever desire Miss Darcy might have had in being acquainted with her must be the work of her brother, and without looking farther it was satisfactory, it was gratifying to know that his resentment had not made him really think ill of her. They now walked on in silence, each of them deep in thought. Elizabeth was not comfortable, that was impossible, but she was flattened and pleased, flattered and pleased. His wish of introducing his sister to her was a compliment of the highest kind, and they soon outstripped the others, and when co- they reached the carriage, Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner were half a quarter mile behind. He then asked her to walk into the house, but she declared herself not tired, and they stood together on the lawn. At such a time, much might have been said, and the silence was very awkward. She wanted to talk, but there seemed an embargo on every subject. At last she recollected that she had been travelling, and they had been, and talked of Matlock and Dovedale with such great perseverance. Yet time and her aunt moved slowly, and her patience and her ideas were nearly worn out before she got before the tete was over. On Mr. and Mrs. Gardiner's coming up, they were all pressed to go into the house and to take some refreshment, but this was declined, and they parted on each other with the utmost politeness. Mr. Darcy handed the ladies into the carriage, and when it drove off, Elizabeth saw him walking slowly towards the house. The observations of her uncle and aunt now began, and each of them pronounced him to be infinitely superior to anything they had ever expected. "'He's perfectly well behaved and polite and unassuming,' said her uncle. "'There was something a little stately to him, to be sure,' replied her aunt. "'But it is confirmed to his air, and not unbecoming, I can say now that I, the housekeeper, that though some people call him proud, I have seen nothing of it.' It was never more surprised than by his behaviour to us. It was more than civil, it was really attentive, and there was no necessity for such attention. His acquaintance with Elizabeth was very trifling. To be sure, Lizzie, said her aunt, he was not so handsome as Wickham, or rather he is not Wickham's countenance, for his features are perfectly good, but how came you to tell us he was so disagreeable? Elizabeth excused herself as well as she could, and that she had liked him better when they had met in Kent than before, and that she had never seen him so pleasant as this morning but perhaps he may have been a little whimsical in his civilities. Your great men often are, and therefore I shall not take him at his word about fishing. He might change his mind another day and warn me off his grounds. Elizabeth felt they had entirely mistaken his character, but said nothing. From what we could have seen of him, continued Mrs. Garner, I really should not have thought that he could have behaved in so cruel a way by anybody. He is done poor by Wickham, as he not an ill-natured look, on the contrary. There is something pleasing about his mouth when he speaks, and there is something of dignity in his countenance that would not give an unfavorable idea of his heart. But to be sure, the good lady who showed us that house did give him the most flattering character. I could hardly help laughing aloud sometimes, but he is a liberal master, I suppose, and that, in the eye of the servant, comprehends every virtue. Elizabeth here felt herself called on to say something in vindication of his behavior to Wickham and therefore gave them to understand in as guarded a manner as she could, that by what she had heard from his relations in Kent, his actions were capable of a very different construction, and that his character was by no means faulty nor Wickham so amiable as they had been considered in Hertfordshire. In confirmation of this, he related the particulars of the pecuniary transactions in which they had been connected, without actually naming her authority, but stating it to such as might be relied on. Mrs. Gardiner was surprised and concerned, but as they were now approaching the scene of her former pleasures, every idea gave way to the charm of recollection, and she was too much engaged in pointing out to her husband all the interesting spots on its environs to think of anything else. Fatigued as she had been by the morning's walk, they had no sooner dined than she set off in the quest of her former acquaintance, and the evening was spent in the satisfactions of an intercourse renewed, 
after many years' discontinuance. The occurrence of the day were too full of interest to leave Elizabeth's much attention for any new friends, and she could do nothing but think and wonder of Mr. Darcy's civility, and above all of his wishing to be acquainted with his sister.' 